Hey, what is up, phone dogs? Bo HD here, and this phone right here is the Sharp Akos Crystal, most famous and really noteworthy for its bezel-less or near bezel-less display. But this guy is also a phone, so let's go ahead and get into my review of the Sharp Akos Crystal by first taking a look at the hardware. Now, like I said earlier, the reason people are talking about this phone is due to its design. It features a 5-inch 720p display with next to none bezels besides the little base bezel on the bottom, which houses the display drivers and other internal specs. The bezels are so minimalistic, though, that this 5-inch display feels much smaller. I mean, since there is considerably less bezel space, the overall size of the device is much smaller, and it makes for a very confusing but pleasant experience. Now, before we jump into the display, if we take a look around the crystal, we'll find the volume up and down controls on the left-hand side. Nothing on the right-hand side, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and power sleep on off button up top, and the micro USB charging port down below. The front of the phone gets interesting though, as the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera is actually down below, along with the ambient light sensors and notification LED. And the speaker used to answer calls is actually embedded into the phone as it uses bone conduction technology to vibrate and transmit sound through your skull, essentially. It's one of the only phones to use this technology in the US, and it works surprisingly well. It's loud, and the speaker quality really isn't too bad at all. I know this technology is pretty odd sounding, but if you're more familiar with Google Glass, it features the same bone conduction technology in Google Glass. But if we take a look at the back, this is really where the design kind of falls flat. The back just isn't too special. You'll find an 8 megapixel camera sensor and flash along with the speaker port down below. But the back cover material isn't really all that premium. It's very slippery and just feels like plastic, which isn't a very premium material. The good news is that the back is removable, so you can insert an SD card and a SIM card, of course. So that's good news, although you're really not going to be able to swap out the battery. But now we can talk about the display. I've never actually used a Sharp smartphone before, but I am familiar with their displays. And this is a nice display panel. It's very bright and vivid. It sort of reminds me of a Samsung panel with how saturated it is. That means it's not gonna be as color accurate, of course, but it's going to look really good. So it depends on how important it is for you to have a color accurate display. But the viewing angles are also excellent and the white balance is surprisingly good. And overall, I'm just surprised at how much I actually like this display. I sort of thought it was going to be a cheap, poorly built panel, but nope, it's pretty decent. The only real complaint I have would be the low number of pixels, but you know, 294 pixels per inch isn't terrible. Now, the other thing I really like about this phone has to do with the software, and that is that it offers a near stock Android experience. There's not really a whole lot of custom Sharp software features. There are some added frameless effects that can be selected to sort of emphasize the fact that you're rocking a bezel-less display. They look pretty spiffy, but they really aren't at all that useful. You can also customize the display modes to change the appearance of the display to make it less contrasty and dynamic and more color neutral. So that's good news if you really don't like the overly contrasty display. But besides that, there's really not much else to really fool around with here. But then again, there really doesn't have to be. The Sharp Crystal runs the latest version of Android, that being 4.4 KitKat. I'm not sure if it'll be updated to Android Lollipop in the future when it's released, but since this phone is so close to stock Android, it's buttery smooth. It has a very simple quad-core Snapdragon 400 processor with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, but there is no stuttering. This device actually is pretty fast for such low-end specs. I can say that I'm pleasantly surprised with the performance. Now, as much as I'd like to be impressed with the camera, I can't really say that I am. The Crystal has an 8 megapixel camera sensor, which is pretty average for a device in this price bracket. And while, yeah, the megapixel count doesn't equal quality, the camera really is not good on this phone. HDR mode is terrible. It often makes pictures appear super white and overexposed. The only way to really get decent pictures is to turn it off completely. And even then, the detail and quality just isn't very good at all. There's not enough megapixels to allow you to zoom in and crop images while still retaining quality. You can take some okay pictures, but chances are they'll turn out overexposed or underexposed depending on whether or not HDR mode is enabled. Which really sucks because it'd be cool to have such a nice camera sensor that captures great images on that bezel-less display, but unfortunately, it really doesn't. 
The battery life is pretty average though. It has a 2040 milliamp battery, which gets the job done. If you crank up the brightness and add some special features that allow you to unlock the display by swiping up, then it's going to drain a lot more, but with auto brightness turned off and being relatively conservative with the power thirsty features, I can get a full day of use with this phone, no problem. Standby time in an area with a mediocre cell connection will drastically lower the battery life, I've noticed. It definitely doesn't have the best standby time compared to other high-end phones, that's for sure. And so overall, the Sharp Acos Crystal is a very solid phone with a surprisingly unique design. But the best part about it, even better than the design, is the fact that it costs just $150 off contract on Sprint or Boost Mobile, which is awesome. If I hadn't known this device cost so little off contract, I would have thought that it would be a mid-range phone with a maybe $50 on contract price tag. I actually enjoyed it that much. I mean, sure, it's not the fastest smartphone on the market and the camera kind of sucks, but it manages to bring a unique design and price point to the table, which is something a lot of phone manufacturers can't really do nowadays. And so I'd say if you're looking for a phone that won't break your wallet and your carrier is either Sprint or Boost Mobile, then go ahead and get this phone. It'll probably satisfy you and all your needs, and it probably will wow people in the process. But anyway, guys, that is my review of the Sharp Acos Crystal. I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.